Welcome to worship this Ash Wednesday as we begin the Lenten season, this journey towards Easter. I would invite you to have some water available. A little bit later in the service, we will be making the sign of the cross using some water. So have some water nearby. And also, if you'd like to participate in Holy Communion, you are invited to do that at the uh, appropriate time in the service. So have some bread or a cracker ready, as well as some juice or wine nearby. God's blessings. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Gracious God, out of your love and mercy, you breathe into dust the breath of life, creating us to serve you and our neighbors. Call forth our prayers and acts of kindness and strengthen us to face our mortality with confidence in the mercy of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today's lesson is from Joel, the second chapter, verses 1 to 2 and 12 to 17. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is near, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Their like has never been from old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him? a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord, your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly. Gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among nations. Why should it be said among peoples, where is their God? Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the sixth chapter. Glory to Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And Whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on the street corners so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they receive their reward. But when you fast, put on oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret, 
and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of the Lord. Today is a homecoming of sorts. It's Ash Wednesday, the beginning of Lent. The preacher Joel proclaims, but even now, says the Lord, repent sincerely and return to me with fasting and weeping and mourning. Come back to the Lord, your God, for God is full of mercy and kindness. God is patient and keeps his promises. God is always ready to forgive and not punish. It's Ash Wednesday, and we've answered a call to return home. But this year, it's different. We're not physically all here, but yet we're connected virtually in some mysterious way through the body of Christ and YouTube. And even so, we can confess our sin. We take time at the beginning of, of Lent to do that, to stop and recognize that there are some things that are seriously wrong. We repent, the word that literally means to turn. It's Ash Wednesday, and we've answered God's invitation to stop and return and be at home with God these next 40 days. I remember a story I heard during Lent that illustrated repentance. The preacher said, the preacher had grown up in South Dakota, and so he began by reminding us that the Greek word for repent means literally to turn quickly. Repentance begins, though, by stopping and then turning quickly. The pastor told the story. Growing up in that little itty-bitty town in South Dakota, it was not the end of the world, but you could certainly see it from there. And the town was so small, when the train came into town, it only came in twice a week. And it was so small, it only had one track, one direction the train could travel. So the train would need to come into town and stop, because the train track stopped. And it would stop on a platform that turned. And this platform was turned by the men of the town getting out, meeting the train and putting these long poles there. And they stick them in the sides of this turn, stye. And then they pushed the train around so it would literally change the direction. But repentance begins by stopping. Stopping behavior that is harmful and even behavior that is, seems benign. Cable news, what could be wrong with that? Stuff on the internet that we read? What if we stopped watching the stuff, turning it off, and taking time to intentionally read and meditate and reflect on how God is at work in our world. What is God up to? To have some silence for meditation, to look at at nature, to give thanks for those things in our life that we should be giving thanks for, to stop, to turn, and return to God and then start thinking about the needs of our neighbor. Those are the themes as we begin this Lenten service season on Ash Wednesday. The name Ash Wednesday gets the name from the tradition of the ashen cross that is made on the foreheads of worshipers with the words, remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. The Ashen Cross has us looking forward and then back. Remembering there was in the Garden of Eden where where God stooped to breathe the breath of life into Adam, into Adam, and then Adam is alive. Where Eve is created out of Adam, this first human being, Adam, and created for a relationship with each other and with God those they cared for, the the creation and this relationship with God. 
Ash Wednesday, we looked back at the garden, at that place where we were not satisfied with the way that God had set things up, and we wanted more, and we had to leave that garden, and so came death into the world. Ash Wednesday causes us to look toward the end and and realize that we are mortals, that our life on this earth does come to an end. Today we remember that fact, but we also remember our beginnings as a child of God, beginning when we were bathed, when we were cleansed in the waters of baptism and claimed unconditionally by our loving God. And the sign of the cross was placed on our foreheads with the words, child of God, you are marked with the sign of the cross of Christ forever, forever. Today in a few moments, After we have confessed our brokenness, I'll invite you to dip your fingers in some water. And that's the great thing about this. Doing this, we don't have to be here together because we can do this wherever we are. And we can do it daily as a ritual to remind us, to connect us to that promises of God. To to do that when we feel the water on our hands and then make the sign of the cross on our forehead. Remember that we are marked with that sign of the cross forever. A few years during the Lenten season, we moved the baptismal font to the narthex. So it would be there for people as they came in to worship, to touch the water, make the sign of the cross as they entered this place. But also as we went out into the world, as we went through those doors to be the body of Christ in the world, we could touch that water again and remember our commission, remember that we are marked with the sign of the cross of Christ and we are to live in in relationship with God and with our neighbors. The sign of the cross, it's our hope. It's a realization that we are creatures that are more than flesh and bones. We have souls, we have a spirit. And we're headed somewhere. God is calling us to come home and to be home with God. That's where we're headed, our homecoming. Because of God's love, we have God's promise that ashes of death are not the end. Because something new will rise from those ashes. After one of our midweek Lenten services a couple of years ago when the baptismal font was in the narthex, I I observed this happening and it it surprised me. One of our young people who was at the uh, Lenten worship service, the Holden Vespers, about 10 years old, I think, she simply stood by that font and dipped her fingers into the water and then Whenever someone passed by as they left this place and they went home, she offered to make the sign of the cross on their foreheads using that water. No one asked that young woman to do this. She simply got it. She got it. She understood the importance of remembering that we belong to our loving God and helping others remember that we belong to God's love forever and ever. At the end of of life on this earth, when we gather for the burial of a, a beloved saint of God, I will make an ashen cross on the casket or on the container of the ashes with the words, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. At the end of our earthly life, the cross is made as a sign of our mortality, but it's also a clue to our future. We are loved by God forever and ever, and that does not end. Now we live between the two marks of the cross, and this is our our chance with God's help to take actions, to amend our life, to change our course, to reset the GPS, a chance to update our itinerary and change direction and go on this journey with Jesus. Today, God is calling us, people such as us, to live in the light of God's grace. We've come thus far by faith and we're headed for the cross in an empty tomb. We're following Jesus. This day is, our destiny is clear. You and I are headed home. Our future is in God's hands. A future of hope and promise as we make our way home with God. Amen.
invited to be a part of this journey during the season of Lent, a journey that begins with repentance, a journey that invites us into meditation, into prayer, into offering special gifts and offerings for others who are in need. We begin with our confession. Most holy and merciful God, we confess to you and to one another that we have sinned by our own fault in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, mind, and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. We have shut our eyes to your call to serve as Christ served us, we have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. We confess to you, Lord, our past unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy, and impatience in our lives, our self-indulgent appetites and ways, and our exploitation of other people, our negligence in prayer and worship, and our failure to commend the faith that is in us. Accept our repentance, repentance, God, for the wrongs we have done, for the blindness to human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. For all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts towards our neighbors, and for our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us, for our waste and pollution of your creation, and our lack of concern for those who come after us. Our accept our repentance, O oh God. Hear us and restore us again, for your mercy is great. Amen. Amen. Invite you to have some water before you so you can make the sign of the cross. Today we are lifting up these connections with water and, and God's words of promise. We remember whose we are, beloved children of God, marked with the sign of the cross of Christ forever. You will be able to touch this water now. And remember that water, of course, is something we can't exist without. We drink water. We can't live without water. We, we use water in our bath or shower. We wash up. The great bath is called baptism. That's the place where God's water, this water of, of God's creation and God's word and promises come together. You are my beloved child. Don't forget you are marked with the sign of the cross of Christ forever. I invite you now to dip your fingers, your hands in the water, to trace a, a cross on your forehead with the words, I am God's beloved child, marked with the sign of the cross of Christ forever. I encourage you during Lent to do this as a discipline. We've been doing a lot of hand washing as a discipline during this time of COVID. <laughs> Soap and water washed away the germs of COVID. Well, as you're doing that, at least once a day, remember your baptism, touch the water, Remember that God has already washed away all of your sin, that God has cleansed you and claimed you forever. So arise, child of God, dripping wet with the promises of God's abundant life. Beloved child, you are forgiven. May you experience God's love and forgiveness every hour, every moment of every day, forever and ever. Amen. 
Let us pray. Gracious God, out of your love and mercy, you breathed into dust the breath of life, creating us to serve you and our neighbors. Call forth our prayers and acts of kindness and strengthen us to face our mortality with the confidence in the mercy of your Son. Lord God, during this season of Lent, we focus our eyes on the basics of faith. Let our eyes be fixed only on our Savior, Jesus Christ. Remind us of the cross of hope that we are marked with, that sign of your everlasting, unfailing love for us. Be with all those who have special needs, those who suffer in body, mind, and spirit. We lift them all up into your care, for your hands are strong, your care is sure. Be with all those in our world who suffer oppression. Let your justice be done upon the earth, your saving help among all nations. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after the supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gracious God, help us to pray that your agenda of shalom will be our agenda as well. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You're invited to take some bread, a cracker, and to commune one another, if you're alone, to commune yourself and say the words. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you.
Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. 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 forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold on to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. Our midweek Holden Vespers Lenten worship will be posted on our web page each Wednesday beginning February 24th. And also check our YouTube channel, San Marcos Lutheran, San Marcos, California. Sunday worship will continue online and in March. Besides the online worship, we'll also have worship outdoors on our patio again beginning on Sunday the 7th of March at 930 God's blessings.